Hi, so for drill number seven, I'm going to focus on the last question, which states, um, the last question in Dear White America asks you to imagine that your child is Black. Even though you likely don't have children, maybe imagine that your brother or sister or close cousin is Black. How does Yancey's exercise call to unmask you and miss an intersectional world of isms? Um, so in this work, in this article, um, Yancey talks about how, although he is a decent person, um, he uses the example for himself that although he's like a decent person, he is still sexist. He still benefits from sexism because he's a man. And the same goes for um, white people and racism. So um, he asks white people to examine themselves and how uh, we perpetuate a racist society. So no matter how good a white person is, if that makes sense. Um, so like, although a white person may be a, a good person and actually do things to attempt to counteract racism, like um, the stuff he listed was like, I don't know, like voting for Obama or something, or just like not saying like the N word and stuff like that. So like, although you're not, being racist yourself, you still benefit from a racist society because racism is systemic. Um, there, He says that there is a comfort in being white, but that comfort is linked to the pain and suffering of Black people. And a very easy example is that, you know, like a white person, a Black person go into a store and like a security guard follows a Black person, like that white person is benefiting from systemic racism. And, you know, another easy example is, like, being pulled over by the cops, like, like, Black people are more likely to be pulled over and to be questioned and to be, like, interrogated than a white person and to, like, face consequences. Um, and it's just stuff like that that I think a lot of white people don't even take into consideration. They don't even imagine what it would be like to be Black, and I think um, that's kind of what Yancey is asking um, us in the last question to imagine our children or our siblings or um, close cousin as a Black. Uh, we know, I think, well, maybe not a lot of white people though, but I think educated white people know that it is hard to be, it is extremely difficult to be Black in America. It's I don't know. So like, I think white people, there's a lot of white people who refuse to see um, how they benefit from racism. Um, so they ignore the weight of responsibility. So by like imagining a family member as a black person, like we acknowledge the struggle and, um, and the, I don't know if this is going to come off as extra, like offensive maybe starting that sentence like that already comes off as offensive, but like, like I said, like we know what it's like to be black in America. It's not like the perfect, it's not like a great experience, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, again, like we, white people benefit off of systemic racism and black people suffer the consequences of it. And um, when you acknowledge that you, you, I guess, like, you wouldn't want, like, a family member to experience what, um, like, what Black people do, basically, or essentially, like, in America, like, as, like, screwed up as that is, I think it, 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 it makes you think, like, it reminds me of this, like, I think it's, like, some kind of politician or something that said, um, I don't know who it was. Maybe I'm just like making this up. I don't know. But like she was like her like adopted black son was like more likely to face like I don't know, criminal charges. Like what she said was totally racist. And it wasn't trying to prove a point or anything. It was just like, saying it to be to like like put basically like I don't know, like put down her black son. Um but it's kind of like the idea that 
her white child would not face the same wouldn't have like this the exact same life as her um black adopted son because again white people they benefit from racism whether they choose to believe that or not like people can believe like white people can believe that this country is equal and that um they're not racist because they have like black friends or whatever but you still or ben- white people still benefit from it regardless of whether you think you are a good person or not so like like Yancey says you know I me I think I'm a good person but I'm still racist not because like not because I have I think racist things if that makes sense but it said like I benefit from this uh, racist society and I think that's what that last question means is like imagining like um a family member as black like I actually do have two cousins who are um, half black, um, and I and I often think I'm like I know that they're gonna have they're gonna face like challenges that I will never have to face just because of their skin color and I'm like I know that and it's it's sad that like and it makes I don't know that's hard to explain I don't I'm kind of going off that tangent but like it just makes me so sad that like that's that it's true that. We live in a society that punishes people of color and uh, like uplifts white people basically just because of how that's how it's always been. But like now, you can see it in, you know, like the protests against police brutality, like over the summer, and they're still ongoing. that I think as a society, we're trying to change, but I think there will always be this idea of um, racism and how it benefits, how it ultimately like benefits white people, especially in America. I guess I, everywhere too, I don't know. Um, this was a long journal entry. I hope I got my ideas across and that they made sense because, yeah, I think it's it's interesting that he asked this question to imagine that your family, your kids or whatever is black because I think deep down white people know that it's, that there's a privilege to being white. And again, we there's a comfort in being white that um, black people don't have because it's like linked to this, um, to systemic racism and such. So that concludes this journal entry.